You can put the next screen up. I just want to show you some famous battles in valleys. You have Exodus 17, the Valley of Rephidim. That's when Israel confronted the Amalekites, the robbers. And God took them from robbery to recovery. How many believe God's bringing you out of a season where the enemy's robbed from you and bringing you into divine recovery? David fought Goliath in the Valley of Elah. Goliath's name literally means to strip you bare and to take you captive. God is breaking us out. David learned in that battle. You know what he learned? He learned to go from intimidation to determination. You know what he learned to do? He learned to prophesy to the enemy. <laughs> We prophesy to each other. We prophesy to the lost. We prophesy. To, but you know what? This season, we're going to learn how to prophesy to the enemy. You know why? Because the enemy has been prophesying to you. He's been trying to put fear in your heart. He's tried to put doubt in your heart. He's tried to put anxiety on your soul. He's tried to mess with your mind. He's been prophesying doom, gloom, and destruction. And you know what? That's what Goliath did. When David came out against him, he was like, who is this pipsqueak of a little boy? Listen to his prophecy. He said, it says he cursed him, he cursed David by his gods. But I want to remind you, we cannot be cursed because the shout of a king is in our midst, amen? He cursed him by his gods, and then he said, today I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. You know what that is? That's a prophecy. That's the devil saying, I'm going to kill you. I've heard the devil tell me he's going to kill me, and I'm still here. Come on. I've heard, him, I've heard literally audible voices of the devil threatening me. How many, have ever, who, how many have ever heard the devil threaten you in an audible voice? And you know what? The whole, his whole thing there is to intimidate us, to get us to sit down, shut up, and back up. Don't you dare. That was Goliath's plan with David. Let me intimidate him. You know what David did? He rose up and he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he would defy the armies of the living God. You come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. This day, I'm going to take your head from you, and I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air, that all the nations will know that there is a God in Israel. I am telling you, you might be in the fight of your life, but God is saying, if you'll start prophesying to your enemy, he's going to rise up, and he's going to show off in a magnificent way, and he's going to take down your Goliath. So I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is, well, the bad news is you're going to have to fight giants. The good news is you eat giants for your bread. The good news is you are a warrior. You are a champion. The good news is you are also a giant. Say, I am a giant. We see Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones, I don't need to preach that to y'all. The Valley of Jehoshaphat. I love this story. Jehoshaphat surrounded by his enemy. Valley of impossibility. We know the story. He sent praisers out first. And after God caused confusion to come into the camp of the enemy. Hear me. As we praise the Lord, as we're giving honor to God, what we have to understand is that God is being glorified. But as we're saying, praise the Lord, his mercy endures forever. You know what God did? God caused a spirit of confusion to come down in the camp of the enemy, and they turned on each other. I want you to understand, that's going to happen this next year. We're going to see the people of God glorifying God, and then we're going to see the enemy fall into confusion and start destroying each other. And after that, they went into the Valley of Barakah, which is, which is the Valley of Blessing. How many believe that God could bring you out of just battling into a place of blessing? Amen? Let me say it this way. Battling to survive into battling to possess. How many understand that it's a different mentality? It's a different frame of mind. If you're just battling to survive, you're going to get worn out, worn down, and want to give up. But if you're battling to possess, if you're battling to take the land, if you're battling to advance, it's a whole different mentality. We're going through that door, and we're going into a season of battling to possess. Now, two more valleys I want to tell you about is a valley that is known as, as Hebron. Hebron is in a valley. Before it was Hebron, it was called Kiriath 
Arba, Kiriath Arba. You know what it means? Think about this for this next year. It means the city of the four. How many know we're coming into the, the year four, the year of the door? But it literally means the city of the four. For what? <laughs> four giants. Four, not just giants, four tribes of giants. But if you remember, when they went in to spy out the land, there were two men that brought back the good report, Caleb and Joshua. And Moses promised Caleb that he would give him Hebron. He would give him Kiriath Arba later on. And let me just read this to you. It's not on the screen, but let me read this to you. It says, this is what Caleb says to Joshua. He says, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. How many understand that the battles we're fighting today are not just for us. They're for our children and for our children's children. Amen. We are fighting a generational battle right now. He said this is going to be for your children and for your children's children forever. And now, because you have wholly followed the Lord. And now, everybody say now. Behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old, and yet as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. That word strong also means a force. Listen to what he was saying. He was saying, I was a force to be reckoned with then, and I'm as much of a force to be reckoned with now. Come on, some of you that feel like you're getting up in age, I'm telling you, you've got wisdom behind you, and you've got a Caleb anointing upon you. Come on. Here I am this day, 85 years. I'm as strong now as I was then, and I'm as strong now for war, both in going out and coming in. I am a force to be reckoned with. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim, the giants, were there. And that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me. And I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenzanite, to this day. Because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. And the land had rest from war. I think it's interesting that years ago, um, <laughs> we were doing intercession up in our prayer room, and Martha Lucia was the head. John Lucia's back there. Everybody wave at John. Martha Lucia was our head intercessor, and she was staring at the map of South Walton one day, south of the bay, south of the intercoastal, and she turned it on its side and found that it mirrored the map of Israel. Isn't that interesting? South Walton, south of the bay, mirrors Israel. And she turned it on its side and she said, well, where is, where is CI located? Where is Vision Church located? And she looked at it, and if you were to draw a dot on the map that was overlaying, we sit right at Hebron. Isn't that interesting? You know why? Because we're a company of giant killers. We're a company of giant killers. So it says that he took Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. I don't have time to preach a whole message on this, but let me just say this, is that every one of those names indicates things that we're going to have to fight in this next season. Arba was the daddy of all of them. His name means four. His son was Anak, which means a strangling chain of bondage. I'm telling you, if you're under some kind of bondage, if you're under some kind of addiction, some kind of destructive p habit pattern, if you're under a, the crushing weight of anxiety and fear, I'm telling you that this year God is decreeing that if you'll put your trust in him and wholly follow after him, he's going to break the strangling chains off of your neck and bring you into freedom and bring you into life. Some of you feel like you've been cursed. I'm telling you, you are not cursed. The curse is being turned to a blessing for you.